Well, uh, I joined him, or he joined me rather, on Saturday night for DAZN. We watched uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Garcia against Luke Campbell and all the other fighters on the cards. Um, it's the former two-weight world champion legend himself, one of the most popular boxers in British boxing history, if not global history, Ricky Hatton, MBE. How are you, bud? I'm good, Gareth. Yeah, you, mate? You're looking well? I'm good. Well, I'm, I'm apparently, uh, I'm George Michael and you're Alexander Povetkin. So, um, <laughs> we got a little bit I'd of... Said, I'd have said more Shawaddy Waddy myself. Uh, <laughs> you know. Shawaddy Waddy and a smaller version of Povetkin. We, we <laughs> said we got the... Uh, the, uh, the, the rip on us on Saturday night when we were working for DAZN, but it was all good fun, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought there were some belters, weren't there? You know, <laughs> <laughs> there were some belters, but uh, it's, all, uh, it's all a good laugh. You, know? you got, you got yeah. fed up of the Bernard Manning re uh, repeats, though, didn't you? And you said someone's getting knocked out later tonight, I remember you saying. <laughs> <at one point. laughs> yeah, Bernard Manning, when he was 21, or what the hell they were saying. <laughs> I think I was the Bernard Manning, that's what you never realised. <laughs> <laughs> um, Look, um, you look very well. I know you've been with the, with the boys in, in the gym this morning. Yeah. Um, you know, the group of young fighters you're training. I'm going to ask you about that in a minute. Um, yeah. Just with a little bit of time to reflect, three or four days to reflect um, on <clears throat> Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell, I think it was a thrilling fight. You know, um, Garcia down in the second and exposed a little bit in that respect. People will talk about him needing to shore up his defences a little bit, bit more and not get that chin uh, from being up in the air. Um, Luke Campbell putting on a fine performance, hurt at the end of the fifth, and then stopped with a rapier blow hooked to the liver in, in the seventh round. With a bit of time to reflect, how good do you think this kid Garcia is going to go on to be, Ricky? I think he can be a star. I think he can be a big star, star at world boxing. I know he got a little bit giddy, we could say, and he got knocked on his uh, on his backside. But we've all been there, and you know we, we've been, we've become better fights, uh, fighters because of that. You know, but I mean, he's still uh, you know that's the first time he went into any sort of elite level, wasn't it? Really, you know. So it's you know, and you know. There was always a chance that could happen, Gareth, because he wasn't brought on to the level of opposition like that. Slowly, 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 he went, whoop, bang. So what did he expect? He's going to make mistakes. He's going to get caught out. And I tell you what, he's, he's the type of fighter you can see. He can fight up close. He's strong. He's powerful. He's got hand speed. He will come back and be a better fighter than that. You know what I mean? If, if he hadn't have had been knocked on his backside... You know, when he does get his shot for the world title, it could have happened then. At least he's got it out of his system now. If it happens again, it won't be a shock to him. You know what I mean? It's, we've all been there. I boxed Damon McGee, he knocked me on my backside. And, you know, I and you become a better fight, a fighter for it. But you can see his power, his speed, his talent. And the fact that he got up and come back and did what he did, he's obviously got a bit of heart as well. So it looks like the full package, mate. Do you... Do you feel that he's ready to step for that world title. Um, Devin Haney, he's mandatory for yeah. now. There's Vasil Lomachenko out there. There's Javonte Davis. There's Tiafimo Lopez, who's the number one in the division. Is he ready for all those challenges? And should we not be talking about, oh, let's have a warm-up fight. Let's have a, another building fight. Should boxing, with this brilliant lightweight division, just getting all these matchups together? Well, you know, normally you would say, you know, build up a little bit, you know, like in years gone by, didn't you? You used to get two fighters, put them on the same bill, build them up, and then they fought Duke and the line. But I think we've, I think we've gone past that era now, haven't we? You know what I mean? And, you know, it's like the years ago when you had, you know, champions that would win a, a world title and make eight comfortable title defences before they challenge the next one. I think it's a different era now, Gareth. I think we're, we're past that stage. These fighters, these, these champions, are to the credit, they want to fight each other. Do you know what I mean? Remember there was like four world titles and everyone had their own belt and everyone avoided each other and it used to it used to piss us off, didn't it, as mm -hmm. as fight fans. But now it's it's different. They all want to fight each other. And I think he's he's certainly ready. I mean he's certainly got the tools to beat any of them. But I just just knowing how the fight with Campbell, how he's gonna learn from that, you know, from that you know, the mistake he made. You just know how good he could be in three or four fights. But, no, I mean, he fought the mandatory, didn't he? That was like the mandatory for uh, Davis, wasn't it? So, uh, uh, for, 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 Haney. for Haney. For Haney, I beg your pardon. Yeah, for Haney. So, it's, you know, 
So you're assuming it's the, if they've done the eliminator, it's going to happen next. And he's, you know, he's well capable of beating them. I would fancy Haney just the, you know, the slightest at this moment in I agree. time. I agree. But if he had, if he had, if he had like a few years ago, where you could have just maybe them two or three fights, just them two or three fights, learning fights, and then went for him, I think he would probably beat him then. But at the minute, I think it might just be a bit too soon. But hey, listen, you know, these 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 fighters these days, they all want to fight each other, and that Garcia is certainly not short of heart, is he? So uh, I, I I think you could see it happen. It wouldn't surprise me if he did beat him. I would just pick Haney ever so slightly at the minute. I completely agree with you because he's so fast and his boxing skills are extraordinary. The other thing yeah. about Garcia, given that he's now got 8 million Instagram followers, he's <laughs> a target for them all because he's so popular. He brings yeah. numbers to the sport. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't need building up from a promotional point of view or anything no. like that. Just two or three fights, not to build his popularity, two or three fights just to build his technique and his, and his knowledge and his, his boxing uh, IQ, if you like, but uh, no, he's, I mean, and I believe he got 200,000 more followers, you know, on top of what he, he already had through that, and that's the that's the world we live in now, and I think the good thing is about, you know, the boxing, I know we, we have a little bit of a moan sometimes that, you know, fights are made at catch weights, and, you know, this catch sports, and, you know, YouTubers are coming in and everything like that, but actual our sport of boxing with all the, the legitimate world champions, whether it be from heavyweight, you know, or whatever, they all want to fight each other. And they never did these days. So the, the YouTubers and all of them can do their, their own thing. But we're talking about, I mean, the actual sport of, of, of boxing, I think it's in a good place for the, re for the reason why the champions are all fighting unification matches. I've never seen as many more unification matches made as lately. It's brilliant. Absolutely. Um, Luke Campbell, do you think he'll take a little bit of time yeah. out? He's obviously... As he said, there were some lovely moments afterwards that we saw where he's joined uh, Cam um, Garcia's family and they've let things go and they've hugged it out and it's lovely. He got home, he's put pictures of his boys, it's lovely to be home. Do you suspect Luke will have a little bit of time and then have maybe one or two more fights? I'd like to see the Linares rematch, by the way. Um, yeah, that's well... That's the kind of fight I'd like to see him in. Well, only, only Luke, you know, can answer... Uh, this for us. I think the way he was like, but Luke's like that anyway. I've met him on a couple of occasions. You know, he's you know, you know, he's he's he's, he's down to earth. You know, so, softly spoken. You know, but determined, so, Ricky. But so uh, determined. But so determined as well. Oh yeah, no doubt. No. But what I'm saying is, his his his, his attitude after the performance. It was all hugs and this and that. There's a part. Of, but Luke's like that anyway. But there's a part you think as he sort of like accepted. You know, that's probably my last one because he was mm. he was so. Uh, lovey dovey, if you like, with the potential. But I mean, Luke's like that all the time anyway, any pretty much. But I think the fact, I'm, I just wondered the way he, the way his behaviour was, was it as he, as he resigned himself to the fact that well, that probably was me in the last one. He probably only him can answer that. But I think he'll go back. Uh, I think he'll go back, spend time with the family, time with the kids, and just make his mind up, you know. And if it feels he's got that urge again, he might have a rematch with uh, Linares. But if you look what he's done from Olympic gold medal, all the amateur, you know, you know, titles that he, he won as an amateur boxing for England, you know, he's fought, you know, Namachenko, one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, Garcia, you know what I mean? He's a young up and coming kid on the on, on the block, you know, he's you know, he's done so much in his career. And I mean what will hurt him is that he just didn't quite get that last thing on his barber for the world title. But um he's listen, he's had one of the probably one of the most decorated amateur boxers we've ever had. He is. And look at it, look at it, look at the qualities. He may have fought for the world title, he may not have won one, but look at the quality of world champions he was in with. I mean, it's, you know, so, I mean, he could retire now, a happy man as far as I'm concerned, but only Luke himself can make that decision. What's, what's, what's in, left in there now, isn't it? Yeah. On, on 2021, um, you know, I know that you're close to Tyson Fury. I mean, I've, I've seen you around the camp many times. Uh, you know, you're, you're someone that's brought in, you're a huge support for Tyson. Must we see Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua in 2021, wherever it takes place? Uh, you know, absolutely. You know, I mean, there's sometimes, you know, there's so many fights that we've lost, you know, that haven't taken place, isn't there? That was fight, the fighters have won, you know, that, that they, the fighting public have wanted and they've, they've, for whatever reason, it's just they've, 
whether it be promoters have not been able to agree or different televisions or just a person a difference in an opinion and they've not happened which has been a shame but I think I think in years to come, and I think I'm talking about, I've been a boxer and a train fighter now, but I think from a totally boxing fan point of view, which is what we both are and what we all are, if in a few years' time there's a chance of Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua and it, and it, and it doesn't happen, uh, I think all involved should kick themselves. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a time where, you know, Tyson is the man for me, do you know what I mean? And, you know, in theory, if you're going to say in theory, he probably deserves the, the lion's share of the... Of the not the lion's share, but, you know, the better percentage of the purse. But, you know, I know Tyson. Tyson has said, let's get this fight on for the public, 50-50 down the line. And I think if TV promoters, um, Tyson and AJ just go, listen, we know what it is. Let's do it right down the middle. There's the split for for everyone. Let's get it on and let's do this for, for England. I think it, it'll be such a magnificent occasion. The greatest fight in British boxing history. Without a doubt. By 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 mile by by mile the biggest fight in British boxing history. Two heavyweights at the top of the game in the prime. No, I tell you what, it, it's got to, got to be done, and uh, and I think it will be for that reason. I think that whether you're the TV or whether you you Frank Warren or Eddie Hearn or Bob Arum, you know, I think they'll all be sat in their offices, and I'm thinking we we're going to end up with egg on our face if we don't get this done. <laughs> I do honestly, and I think and I think I think they all I think they will. I think they'll all come together, TV, whatever, and I think they'll get it done. And I spent even more so, I think, with this difficult time for us all, isn't it? Yeah. Lockdown, none of us have had anything to, you know, to shout, cheer about anything. We're all a little bit down. Imagine if that fight comes to the forefront, Gareth. Exactly. Oh, I mean, Eddie, really? Eddie, Eddie Hearn mentioned, or he, he, I saw in, a, in one report, that Singapore could even be an option for the contest. So we may even be going to the... Uh, into to the far east, or sorry, to the to the um, to the far east for it. So, um, yeah, well, you know, it, it, you know, it, I mean, to be an ideal world would like it in England, in Wembley, with a crowd, Wembley Stadium, with a crowd of hundred thousand fans there, won't be. But in an ideal world, you know, it's not. But if it's still got to be made to happen, you know what I mean. And if it does, yeah. wow, what a what, a, what an unbelievable because. You know, I repeat myself a lot sometimes, but a few years ago, when you remember the British heavyweight scene, even in Britain, it was, you know, no disrespect to anyone who was around at the time, but it was dire. It was terrible. And when you look at the heavyweight scene now, Britain, you know, we've, you know, we've got so many good, apart from, you know, Tyson and AJ, there's so we've got other heavyweights that are there that are really coming through, that are in the top 10, you know, Dylan White and, you know, people, people like that. So it's, um, Even people uh, like Fabio Joe, Wardley, Joe Joyce, yeah, Joe Joyce, yeah, Joe yeah, Joyce. yeah. So what, what, what a time for heavyweight boxing, and for having such a successful time of heavyweight boxing at the minute. If we don't get that main one done together, I think we're ruining a, we're ruining a, we're ruining a terrible era for British heavyweight boxing, won't we? Both of you and both you and I have already picked in a way both in our conversations and I've heard you say it with other people and I agree with you that Tyson Fury um, is the obvious choice to pick because of his boxing skills in that fight but because it's heavyweights and because Joshua is such a good finisher and clearly improving it's actually a really good yeah. matchup as well isn't it you know very good matchup. I mean, in the heavyweights we, we always say the one punch can make all, all, all the difference you know but Tyson's got unbelievable ability it's absolutely frightening but you know you know AJ's got fantastic you know boxing ability you don't get an you know an Olympic gold medal you know for you know for for nothing you know you've got to have the the fundamentals there you know you know to to, to be a successful amateur like AJ was he's got wonderful boxing ability and I, you did know, you think of, did you think he was improved against Pulev I think he was improved yeah I think there was still that little bit I mean I think against the rematch against Ruiz he was a little bit Timid, he looked a little bit gun shy. Um, yeah. yeah, but then he uh, he fought uh, Golovkin, uh, uh, he fought Povetkin, I beg your pardon, you know, and he was a little bit better again, you know what I mean? You, you know, once you've been knocked out, when I got bit, beat by uh, Maywe Mayweather, it takes you a while to get your confidence back, you know, I mean, yeah. the first time you've ever been knocked out. I mean, I fought a guy called Juan Lascano at the City of Manchester Stadium when I got beat by. Um, um, 
Mayweather, and every time, he wasn't a massive puncher, but every time he hit me, I don't know whether it was in my own mind or anything like that, I was wobbling, I was, I was like an MFI wardrobe, I was all over the place. <laughs> I thought, what's, you know, what, what's going on here? And it's nothing wrong with your chin, you just need to get that confidence back, you yeah. know what I mean? You know what, and that's, and that's, I think, what AJ is doing, and that's why his performances are getting better and better and better. I don't think you could knock his performance against the vet. Maybe he could have been and gone in for the kill a little bit, but I mean, he's learned from the Ruiz defeat, hasn't he? When he went in for the kill a little bit, you know what I mean? He got clipped with one. So he's, I think his AJ is doing everything he, since, since he lost these titles and regained them, I think since he's regained them, I think he's doing everything that, that he should do. And he's been doing it well. Finally, Ricky, um, <clears throat> Campbell Hatton, your son, has turned pro late in the year. Obviously, he was around the uh, Joshua Pula fight. You were there in the bubble yourself with Campbell. Um, yeah. He's turning pro under, under, Eddie, under Eddie Hearn's promotion. When's he likely to make his start? And how do you feel about that? And secondly, tell us about... You've got a group of really talented y- youngsters around you. I've met a few of them when I was up last time with you. Tell us about that and how you feel about Campbell and when you think he'll turn pro. Yeah, well, they, they, Eddie mentioned the uh, middle of February, you know, for, for Campbell. And I'm hoping that's going to be the same. But because of the recent national full lockdown, you know, that has taken place and the rules have been, uh, the rules of the game have been changed again, ain't it? And I, I think, if I remember off the top of my head, is it, you know, the Board of Control aren't allowing any shows to go ahead in January, I think? Correct. Correct. Uh, so, so Campbell's fight in, in, in mid, middle of Feb should really, you know, go, go ahead. So Campbell's in training now, you know, for, for that date and he'll be ready for that date unless he, uh, he you know, hears otherwise. And uh, what, you know, what a proud moment for me, you know, as as, as a father. I mean, when, when we signed, we announced it uh, in going professional at the, um, at the, the, the AJ uh, Povetkin uh, week, uh, Pulev, sorry, we get that wrong, mate. Uh, Pulev week. It was, it was unbelievable. And the job that Matrim did, you know, the drum they banged for him, you know, and everything like that. And uh, it only seems like yesterday I was signing my professional papers, and then you know, there me, uh, me son is. But uh, I think people are gonna, gonna love him at the minute. You know, he's, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what his dad does. He's got to do that. You know, that will, he's he'll very quick witted, isn't he? I found him very quick witted. Um, well, a few live people, wire, isn't he? You know, yeah. But a few, few people turn around and say, you know, he's uh, he said he always he's trying to be like his dad a little bit. I used, I used to think, you fucking idiots, what do you mean he's trying to be like my dad? Look at him, he is, <laughs> he is dad, he looks like me, he talks <laughs> like me. But I like to think people like me because I was, I was down to earth, you know, I never. Never said a bad word about anyone or any of my opponents. Or down to earth, you know. I mean, humble and and you know, he's exactly the same. That's how me and my mum, me and his mum brought him up. You know, to be confident but respectful. You know, if you can make people smile and make people laugh, you know, do that all day long. You know, I mean, and as far as his fighting goes, he's, he fights exactly like me. He's a body puncher. He's very very aggressive. Uh, he's really come on in the last few weeks. He's trained by my brother Matthew, and I've been doing a, a bit with him, and he's. He's really fine-tuned, fine-tuned his, uh, his tools now. So he's not just uh, a little hook-a-minute merchant, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's thinking about his stuff now. And I think, you know, the minute people see him fight, you know, they'll, they'll love his style. And the minute they stick that microphone underneath his, his chin and they hear him talk about things, and that's, you know, I'd like to think they'll love him like they, like they used to love me. Because, I mean, if you, if you love me, you're going to love my son because that's what he is. He's a chip off the old block. He's been brought up with the same morals, same attitude, and he's got the same drive and everything. So I think we might have half a chance. I think we might be in that blue moon on again and there's only one Campbell at him. But uh, early days yet, but I think... Uh, I think he's. I think. I think people are going to love him. You were notoriously nervous when Matthew fought. I remember always for him. I know you just said you were incredibly proud of him. And I'm sure you are. He's a lovely kid, and I've met him. He's lovely. Um, you're going to be really nervous when your son fights, though, aren't you? Oh yeah, without without a doubt. But I mean, uh, that's that's you know, mate. I mean, I manage him, you know, and, and Matthew Matthew trains him. Yeah, and he'd be really nervous, but you know. Like I controlled my nerves when I was fighting, I've got to control my nerves with my son because my son doesn't want to turn around and, you know, look at dad at ringside shaking like a shitty dog with nerves, does it? You know what I mean? It's, you, know, it's, uh, you know, so it's all about, you know, 
you know, if he sees me confident, he sees Matthew, I think we're all being nervous. The whole family been nervous. But how's, Granny, how's Granny Carol Hatton? Is she more nervous for him than she was for you? Well, my mum said she's going to be worse, to be <laughs> honest with you. So I don't think that was physically possible, to, to, be, to yeah. be honest with you. But, uh, but no, it's... Uh, and, you know, Campbell's mum, you know, you, you should see Campbell's mum, Claire, at the... At, 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 at her fights, you know, I, you look across, think, straight in your face if he sees you, he won't, he'll jump out of the ring, never mind jump in the ring. But no, I mean, when it's someone you love, it is very, very hard. But, you know, the family's been there with me, the family's been there with Matthew, and the, we're going to be there with Campbell, and we'll certainly know how to handle it. You know, it is what it is. But uh, he's got the great opportunity, he's got a great team behind him, he's got me and Matthew behind him from that boxing knowledge and perspective, he's got a great family behind him, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the only thing, you know, he's got the best opportunity there to do it. All, all he's got to go out there now, dedicate himself, work hard and prove it prove it yourself for them because we can't help you when, it, when you get in that ring. We can help you so much, but when you get in that ring, you've got to do it. And I think you will. And, and finally, Ricky, um, and I hope we don't leave any of them out. Um, there's a group of lads <clears throat> training with you at the moment who you're very excited about. Just tell us a little bit about... Them, I, mean, I think you put a video out yesterday, either on Instagram or Twitter, showing all the boys running um, on the machines at, at, at yeah. Hatton, Hatton Gym. Well, they just started back. We're very fortunate that we're able to be, you know, it's like elite athletes in it. So I'm still able to train with professional boxers. But yeah, I've got, uh, you know, good prospects of, of, of kids uh, come, coming through. I know, I, I, you know, a few years ago, I... Um, I trained Zanet Zaki Arnoff, who became world bantamweight super champion, and, and Sergey Rabchenko, and, and, and Ryan Burnett. The Europeans, and, and Ryan, Ryan Burnett, Burnett was there, yeah. in, the, in the early stages, I trained Ryan Burnett. So, uh, but, you know, at the minute, I've just got little prospects. You won't have heard of him yet, but the, you will have heard, be hearing of him in a, in a few years. I've got an Irish lad called Brett McGinty, who uh, won uh, lots of national titles, you know, representing his country for Ireland as a, you know, as, as, a, in, as a youth. Uh, he's one unbeaten as a, a professional. Uh, I've got Ibrahim Nadine, who was a former ABA champion. He's come from the Berry ABC Boxing Club, who's very, very talented. Uh, he's two unbeaten. Uh, also, uh, me, uh, we've got Brad Rear, who's uh, nine unbeaten. And it's a shame because uh, me and Brad's trainer, Blaine, we, uh, we work together, me and Blaine Eunice, you know, with, with the lads in the gym. I think Brad was on... on, on just on the doorstep of knocking on for a, an English title or, or certainly an area title or whatever. But it was, you know, it was just about to happen for for Brad. But uh, obviously, it's been put on the on the back burner. But the, within the gym, they're still training, they're still ticking over. I've got two uh, two kids are training just to, in order to get the license. To be honest with you, but the lockdown's been good for them because they wasn't quite ready for the pros yet. Mm. But uh, but they are going to go pro, and that's why they're in the gym working on the strength and the stamina and the technique and the maturing. So by the time this gets lifted, there'll be two elevator fighters, Jack Murphy and Brian Brian Kelly, two uh, great great prospects. And the gym's uh, buzzing, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's great to go. I mean, there's nothing I love better than you know. I'm not fighting myself the day, but when you go to the gym every day of your working life, it's like your second family in many ways, Gareth. Isn't it? You get close yeah. to the kids working with them. Uh, you know what it meant for me when I was putting the hours in in the gym, and you know, and I can see the same determination in their eyes as I used to see, and it's 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 brilliant for me. This and that's that's my my job these days to try and bring the next one through hopefully and we might have a few there as well and Campbell Campbell to put to the uh, put to put to the list. And you're very open about it. With them all it's do as I say, not do as I did, isn't it? Oh my oh my God, yeah. It's, it's you you like, say you'd have <laughs> thrown yourself out if you'd behaved not not at the beginning of your career, but later on, where you'd it, like go well, partying afterward after fights and you won't let them do that. It worked for me with Billy. Billy knew what it was, what it was, what it was like. It worked for me with Billy, but just because Ricky hadn't got away with it doesn't mean everybody else is going to get away with it. You know, yeah. and there's a couple of people I've heard that a couple of kids sometimes have said, "Well, Ricky Hatton did it," you know, and uh, it makes me not makes me oh, it makes me cringe so much that I think kids are thinking because I got away with ballooning up, you know, that they can get away with ballooning up. It's not the way forward. I tell you, it's you know, I was a freak. I was a one off, and I got away with it. And I was very very lucky. I got away with it as long as I did. But I had a good trainer and a good nutritionist behind me. But I I weigh all my lads before the before the, the training session. I weigh them after the training session. They have the fight. I say right, you can have a week off. But when you come back, I don't want you to put any more than 
five or six or four or five six pounds you know and that's the way you come in if you're coming overweight you're in trouble you know oh the dictator the, ricky the dictator hatton now then yeah 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 but, and that's the way it's, that's, that, that, that's the that's the way it's got to be i mean i wouldn't have changed anything for the for the world because that's why my following comes from because it was a little bit of a scallywag jack the lad you know <laughs> and i think that's why people love me but now my son's in the game and i'm training lads and i'm trying to they're putting their future in my hands to look after their future in my hands so you know no don't, don't go down the ricky way like you say do as i say not do as i say not as i did and, yeah, they, yeah. They, and, they, and they are they all do well they haven't got a choice really to be honest and, and, uh, but i'm also quite proud that if they want to come to me from the boxing point of view there's nothing i haven't done in this game but if they want to come from to me from the personal side because that's what i think being a good trainer is you know you know there's no yeah. point in, you get the best from your lads in the four walls of the gym if they're only out, if they're only happy on outside of the gym. You know what I mean? It's no, you're not going to have a very good boxer in the gym if his life's falling to bits out there. And mm -hmm. my life fell to bits uh, on a few few occasions. And I'm in a good position to be able not just to advise them on the boxing, but to advise them on life and what's going on outside of the ring. So I think uh, I don't I don't I see it as I'm, I'm not the trainer. I'm the mate that puts the gloves on for them. <laughs> That's why I see it. That's how I see it. That's brilliant to hear, Ricky, and it's fantastic to catch up with you, and it was a privilege and a pleasure to work with you on Saturday night. Thanks so much, bud. Pleasure, Gary. Take care. Good to see you.